So today I'm going to be talking about my experience growing up in Queens in the 1990s. Well, mid-1990s to mid kind of early 2000s time period. Specifically, I'm going to talk about some of the instances of when I got into fights and I got mugged. I guess it depends on how you look at it, but it's not as bad as it sounds now that I think about it. But I guess if you are a parent, it does sound pretty horrible. I'm a parent today and I wouldn't want any of this to happen to my kids. But after going through it, I don't think it's as bad. Um, maybe it could have been worse, but it wasn't as bad as I think it could have been. Um, I'm gonna exclude like small schoolyard fights or playground fights, uh, which you know those kind of happen on occasion. I'm just gonna focus on a couple of stories that kind of stood out to me as I think about my early childhood, kind of growing up in Queens. Hopefully, this is interesting or amusing for you guys. It certainly shaped um, my behavior over the years, at least you know, kind of growing up. With that, let's get right into it. Casio F91. So that like really simple, cheap. Casio watch, you know, with inflation, it's probably like you know, 18, 18, 20 bucks. But back then, when I was in elementary school, it was only like, you know, nine or ten dollars. And I remember my dad buying one for my brother and I. It just felt amazing to have like a watch. It felt so cool to be like an adult. And so my brother and I got these new Casio F91 plastic watches. So one Saturday, we went on the 7 train to go from Woodside to Flushing because every Saturday, my younger brother and I had Chinese classes. Now we were in elementary school at the time. So we get onto the train platform, we get onto the last car in the train because we wanted to stare out the back window to look at, you know, the train tracks as the train's rolling by to look at the last station that we're leaving. And it was just us, me and my brother, my little brother in that train car. And then one or two stops in, two big kids get into the train. You know, they are easily a foot taller than us, um, probably in middle school, even perhaps early high school. And you know, we just were not very wise about this. We, you know, we should have been wiser, but it was just me and him alone. One of the big kids comes up to me and says, hey, let me see your watch. And I said, uh, no, I, I don't want to see it. My brother just froze. He just kind of, kind of stood behind me, didn't know what to say. And the guy said, let me see it, I'm gonna smack you in your face. At which point, for a little kid in elementary school, I was feeling pretty scared. So I took off the watch and I gave it to him. And he stands there right in front of me, just staring at it. And then as the train rolls by into the next stop, he just runs out of the door and leaves with his friends. I just freeze, like, I, I don't know what to do. I'm not gonna chase the guy. I'm not gonna try to get into fight with him. I basically just lost my watch and it is what it is. So I kind of stood there. I quickly got over my shock and I was just really embarrassed and angry and a little sad by the situation. I went up to the window because the, the train doors had closed and there's this window on the doors. And I stuck out my middle finger to them in the window as the train was leaving by. I mean, there's really nothing else I could do. Right? As, as a little kid, it is what it is. You just got taken, you got robbed. So that was my first experience you know, of a real mugging as a little kid and, and that was in elementary school. Butterflies and brass knuckles. So this time I am in middle school. Maybe like seventh grade, I think. Three of us were walking back from school up this hill. It's next to the park and it's actually an elementary school in Woodside. And we're walking up this hill and we're just chatting and joking. And three bigger guys, probably in high school, just walked past us to going the other way. I think we made a joke that inadvertently we kind of looked at them. The joke wasn't really meant towards them at all, but we kind of looked at them for a couple seconds too long. So we keep walking up this hill. One of us eventually you know, peels off, they leave to go home. Now it's just me and one other friend. So we went up to, up to the hill and then we turn around and walk along the block. And then halfway through the block, we hear someone saying, hey, stop. So we turn around and then all of a sudden those three kids that had walked by us, they suddenly surround us. And I'm just like, uh, uh oh, what, what's going on? And then the ringleader, he pulls out a butterfly knife. One of the other kids flashes brass knuckles. And he said, hey, why don't you come talk to us over in the playground behind the elementary school? We were right in front of an elementary school, which is the block that we're on. And my friend who was wiser than me said, no, we're not gonna go there because what, you're gonna stab us or, or beat us up there? And so we just said, we're not gonna go over there. And so then the ringleader says, okay, give us your wallets, which basically means give me your wallet or I'm gonna physically hurt you. So we give them all wallets. And as kids, you don't have much in there. So they take our school Metro card and they take probably like five bucks for me and like 10 bucks from here. This metro card is a regular metro card but the school metro card is green and it lets you have three rides per day which is probably worth at least you know depending on, on when you take the trains but it's a decent amount of money for a kid to have the value of three rides per day and for someone in middle school or high school to go hang out with your friends. You would take one ride to get to school, you would take another ride to get from school to go hang out at a place and then you take the last ride to get home. So it's pretty valuable currency. So they, they took that from us. It was scary because there was a prospect of real weapons involved and actually really getting hurt. 
because we had no idea what these guys would do if we had gone in to the playground behind the school. But anyways, you know, I, th I think thank God for, for my friend who was a little bit more wiser than me. He kind of knew that he needed to keep us there to kind of minimize the damage that we would take. And maybe we get punched, you know, just once in the face on the stomach and we get our stuff taken, but at least we weren't going to be in a quiet place, you know, with these three guys. Uh, even though the sidewalk was, was relatively quiet, they, they weren't going to start, you know, pounding on us, you know, right there on the sidewalk. Pizza stare down. Again, still in middle school. So there's a pizzeria across the street from my middle school. And every day after school, all of us would go there to hang out. Dollar pizza, a dollar Powerade, and three arcade games. So as you can imagine, it's a pretty popular spot to hang out. There's a group of us, me and my friends, sitting at a table, just hanging out, joking around. And there's another group of kids on another table. Now, I inadvertently stared at a guy in the eyes for a little bit too long. It was just a second too long that I happened to glance over in his eyes. And I didn't make anything of it. I was like, just, just keep, you know, I just keep hanging out with my friends, we keep, you know, joking around, you know, laughing. And then we get up and leave. And we walk towards the train station to go home. Two or three blocks down as we're walking away from the pizzeria, the other group of guys catch up with us. And basically they're looking for a fight. Well, I don't know if they're looking for a group fight or if they're looking for a one-on-one -on -one fight. I was the smallest and nerdiest looking person in my group of friends. And so that kid who I had, you know, looked at, he basically say, you know, why were you grilling me? Why were you grilling me back in the pizzeria? You know, grilling basically, why are you staring at me you know, the way that you were? And so he singled me out to fight. Perhaps he was trying to make a point or prove himself to his friends. But basically, there's no way out of it. I just had to fight him on the sidewalk, you know, then and there. So all of us, my friends and his friends, they form a circle around us. And then we just have to start fist fighting each other. I was relatively fit and lean. This guy was a little, little bit pudgy, a little bit shorter than me. Just athletically speaking, I wasn't taking it too seriously. I, I didn't want to risk his other friends jumping in being a huge brawl or something and so I just kind of kept it light with the punches he tried to take me down to the ground but he just wasn't strong enough to lift me and I just had a good enough base a good enough balance to kind of keep him away and so we just kind of you know circle each other you know I got hit a few times in the face and the side of the head I, I hit him a few times you know nothing major and then my friend and his friends decided to just kind of end it it's been a few minutes you know it is what it is so I shake hands with that guy that far and then we just leave and that was it it's just one of those random things you wouldn't think would happen don't look at anyone in the eyes for too long in New York City, right? Ankle monitor. This is a high school. I think it was in ninth grade. After high school, I went to the local park that I used to play with when I was growing up in Queens uh, with a couple of my friends and we were just out there playing. It was maybe like four or five, six of us. There's another group of six to like ten kids and just being a little bit rowdy. I'm just there playing with my friends. Eventually, a couple of my friend group, they peel off. They, they start going home and then we only have, you know, two to four people left in our group. And there's one bigger guy in that group who is very tall and maybe like an overgrown high schooler, well over six foot tall and he had an ankle monitor on probably just came out of juvie or something he was definitely trying to look for a fight he was trying to accuse us of throwing balls over at him which we would you play handball you kind of miss hit and the ball would just roll over to the other side and he just said you know what guys trying to target me anyway making any excuse to start a fight for whatever reason he picks me and maybe i'm just the smallest or the, the easiest looking target and he just says like hey why are you messing with me why can't i throw balls at me I'm like well, hey that no one's doing that what are you talking about at this point he's just like standing right in front of me trying to escalate the matter his friends are slowly creating like a circle around us um you know my friends are there but i'm not really sure what to do i'm just trying to talk the situation down but when i look to the side for a split second as i was talking i suddenly get punched right here in the face i have a tiny scar in the here you can't really see it but i get punched and i drop to the ground so the guy just sucker punches me and then i feel him like trying to kick me so i cover my head i try to curl up it happened really quickly but i think his friends or my friends just kind of pull him away Way, and then he starts cursing at me and then one of my friends just picks me up and then we all just went out of the park. I had a black eye on my left eye for about three or four weeks. So I would have to <laughs> I would wear like sunglasses in, in high school to heal. That was probably the most actual violence that, that I got into. I think I should have been wiser. I should have been wiser when I when I noticed how rowdy they were getting. I saw my friend group slowly diminishing that I should have said, hey guys, let's just get out of there. Because I know the week after, some of my, my same friends in that group and they got into an altercation with the similar group of kids. This time it was a lot more violent. They were like lead pipes evolved. At least I avoided that, but I think, you know, we all should have been wiser and just got out of that kind of situation, you know, quicker. Following. This is a situation that I avoided. Potentially could have been pretty bad. I'm in high school. Me and my little brother were walking Main Street. We went to an arcade store. We played some arcades. And then we're walking back home. And it was a long walk. It's like a 20, 30 minute walk back home. And by this time, I have some, some sixth sense of like danger behind me. So I noticed that there were three big dudes, like maybe 20 something year old dudes trailing us. And every time I look back, I would see, you know, them like pretend to look at stuff that's, you know, put in front of these stores for sale. But it didn't make sense because they were looking at like ginseng and stuff. And they weren't Asian. And so this happened you know, for a block or two. And good thing is, you know, Main Street's pretty crowded. So, you know, nothing's going to go down. And so I just stop and wait. Uh, with my brother, looks like these guys. Kind of following, let's just stop here and wait and see what they do. They 
initially, you know, kind of casually walked to us and said, ask, hey, you know, do you guys have like change for 20? I said, no, I don't have any money on me. I don't have change for 20. I can't help you there. And then he says, hey, do you know where the Boys and Girls Club is? One of the avenues off of Main Street is a long avenue, not too busy. The Boys and Girls Club happens to be about midpoint on that avenue. So I just said, hey, you know, I just pointed out. It's actually down that avenue. You walk, you can't miss it. And he goes, you know, I, I don't have good eyesight. I can't see. Could you walk us over there? I'm like, nah, man, I cannot walk you over there. Nah, I can't do that, man. I can't do that. Conversation ends there. I said, I'm not going to go there, and they're not going to physically drag us over there. I take my brother and say, hey, let's go. So we walk away, and I tell him, we're going to go to the library. There's a library right off the main street that's pretty busy. Let's just go there and camp out and see what they do. So we just go in the library. I sit by one of the windows, and I just look out to see if they're lingering around, if they're waiting for us. After 10, 15 minutes go by, I kind of feel like maybe they've gone away. So then I say, okay, let's go. I leave the library with my brother. And we keep looking around to see if they're anywhere. And then I tell them, let's just run home. So we both just run home. And that was that. We just ran home. You know what? It it, it sounds... I guess it is bad. I guess if you're a parent... So I'm going to take back what I said at the beginning. If you're a parent and you hear your kids tell these stories, it does sound bad. And you wouldn't want any of your kids to have to go through this. But I think part of growing up in New York City, if you're like a latchkey kid or your parents are like too busy with the work and they just don't have the ability to give you too much oversight, you are going to run around the streets and you just have to develop a sixth sense of staying out of trouble, staying out of some dangerous areas. You know, I've walked into some dark alleyways at night by mistake, you know, not, not thinking because I thought that, you know, I'm good, like I, I know how to take care of myself. You just never know if you might stumble into the wrong, wrong people and you never know if two or three guys just eyeing you, you, you know, looking to get a nice target out of you. It's interesting, it's interesting uh, to, to tell these stories at this age because New York City has changed so much. It's gotten so much safer, you know, since those days. I had friends who grew up in New York City in the 80s, and it was much worse in the 80s. A lot more gang violence in the 80s. And so coming of age in the 90s and early 2000s wasn't as bad. It was as New York City was getting safer, but it was still, there was still kind of danger zones that you, you had to be careful of. I don't want to discourage you guys from not letting your kids have any freedom, but just being mindful of certain neighborhoods and being out at night. Hopefully this is entertaining, uh, not depressing, please, um, because I'm alive and well here. I've certainly learned from all those things. No real kind of lasting damage, just a lot of good lessons learned. I'm sure New York City is better now than it was before, even with some of the crime issues because of COVID. Um, it's still much better today uh, than it was back in the 90s. Thank you guys. Take care. See you soon.